Hey guys, it's Jeff. Thanks for checking out my video today. In today's video, I want to talk about this guy right here. It's an interesting upper, and I'm going to tell you about it on the tabletop, so stay tuned. Alright guys, thanks for checking out this video. Like I said, this is going to be on an upper, but before I get into that, if you like this kind of content, you like what I'm doing here, and you want to help support a small channel, please like, subscribe, check out the links in the description if you're looking to purchase some stuff. There are links for affiliates and, and that sort of thing. Helps me do the work that I'm doing here and bring you the kind of content that you want to see. So if you're into the AR-15 platform, if you're into the AR-15 rifle, you're getting your first gun or you've got a several of them, you're probably on a journey similar to this one, right? So, you know, you may have a competition set up, something similar to this, right? This is an F1 Firearms. I've done a, a video on this guy. You may have the defensive rifle set up. This is the IWI Zion 15, great little rifle. Done a video on this one as well. But this is set up for defensive home use. You know, this is my this is my go-to bump in the night gun. This is the one that uh, have a lot of rounds through and I enjoy a lot. Uh, I've done several videos on this one as well. So you may be here. You may have a nice defensive rifle that you use to you know, protect your property, to protect your life, for something that you're using for duty or something along those lines. And it may be set up similar to this setup. All right, so what is a dissipator upper, right? What is it, you know, what does this mean to you? What makes this unique other than obviously the retro look? Well, a dissipator upper was a, a an attempt at making a carbine length rifle using the rifle length gas and, and sight radius between the uh, fixed front sight or fixed sights. Uh, it had some problems. They learned that the dwell times with you know, the gas uh, and the dwell times in the, with the bullet in the barrel uh, and bleeding those gases off caused some functioning issues. And so what they did was, and the way they alleviated was, they used the uh, mid-length gas blocks, right? So they used a low-profile gas block and they pulled the gas back from the front sight post back to the mid-length gas block so that they can get more functioning and reliable cycling of the rifle, right? So that's how they got it working. What are the benefits of keeping it in this configuration? Well, having it having the front sight post all the way out at the very end gives you a further sight radius which increases the perception of overall accuracy. Now, is a carbine accurate? Absolutely it's accurate, but some people feel like if you add an extra couple of inches that you can be more accurate. So with that, uh, well, what do you got? Well, you've got a typical AR-15 upper. This is a 16 inch barrel. Um, and I'll just run, in, run through the specs real quick. So it's 4150 chrome molly vanadium. Uh, it's a good barrel steel, so if you're looking for you know a decent AR-15, 4150 uh, V is a decent steel. Um, it's nitride treated, one in seven twist, M4 feed ramps, and a forged and tized upper, 7074 T6 aluminum. So it's a flat top upper. It's got a full rifle length handguard on it. Uh, it, is, it does have the delta ring, so this isn't a free float barrel. That's not what this is built for. Obviously, it has a pinned uh, front sight post. Got a typical A2 flash suppressor up front. Uh, got your you know sling uh, sling swivel here, and um, you know just a decent, good quality AR-15. Now, I can tell you this, right? So I've been doing this for a while now. I've been shooting AR-15 since the end of the Brady Band. And having a gun like this really made me appreciate the configurations and the improvements that have come out since the AR-15 was reintroduced uh, to the civilian market after the end of the Brady Band in 2004. So why did I build this gun? Kyber Customs, uh, they were putting on a competition. I've competed with those guys before in the AK-47 matches using my Galil. And so I wanted to compete with them again using a retro rifle. This was a rifle or a similar style rifle to the one that I carried in Iraq. And it, I thought it would be interesting and fun to go out and run this competition 
So I went out, got on the internet, looked around, what are the kinds of guns that are out there that I want to run? And I wanted to try this out here, so I'm bringing it to you. Now, why I wouldn't recommend something like this is if you have ever carried a gun like this or you've ever shot one of these um, you know over time uh, you'll learn very quickly that the improvements in the area 15 have become very transparent you know things like the original stock and grip you know those those are very antiquated you can tell that these were made for a universal type body uh you know different hand sizes different body shapes etc etc and so it's not very comfortable if you're used to having a larger you know swell a larger palm swell uh this a2 style grip is garbage in comparison to what's out there now um, you know hogue and magpul and all these others that are putting out aftermarket accessories for these things really do improve the overall functionality as well as, you know, the D-ring. You know, this is a great configuration for a battle rifle, but if you're looking for some improved accuracy, a free float barrel is always going to be better. Adding more weight to the end, you know, with the fixed front sight post, that's, a, uh, that's another hindrance to overall accuracy at distance. Now, some people would argue this gun isn't very... Uh, accurate or lethal, especially um, in body armor terms. You know, we've heard about the AR-15 or technically the M-16s, uh, the M-4s uh, shortcomings in Afghanistan when it came to take, taking shots at distance. And so that's where the whole XM-7-5, blah, 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 whatever that is now, that's where that was developed from, you know, near peer armies and a more lethal round uh, in uh, being able to defeat body armor at distance, you know, blah, 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 right? This is still a perfectly functioning gun, three, four, 500 yards. Uh, you absolutely can be lethal with this round. Um, depending on the target, obviously, you know, it's not a very large cartridge, right? So keep that in mind. Um, but anyway, this is still a very functional rifle uh, as far as a battle rifle goes. Now, if you want one of these, you know, who would want one of these? You know, somebody who uh, wants a retro gun, you know, somebody who carried one, somebody whose dad carried one, you know, you throw a fixed, uh, Fixed stock on here, you can really get pretty retro on this guy. Obviously, you're not going to have the full retro look, and there are companies out there now. I think it's uh, uh, that other company from Palmetto. It's slipping my mind right now. I've done video on it. I'll, I'll link a video to it, but it's got the full length uh, barrel. This has a heavier barrel. This doesn't have a pencil barrel on it, right? But it's very inexpensive, and I think you're getting a lot of lot of upper for your dollar. Uh, I don't want to put dollars or cents in here, um, but I'll have a link to it to my campsite page in the link below, and uh, you guys go check these out. They're very inexpensive. I think they're out of stock as of the filming of this video. They've run some uh, some sales recently, and they've I think they've run out of them. Um, but you know, with everything from PSA. If people are buying it, they're going to keep making it. So these being sold out is a good thing. Now, they do offer an upgraded version, right? So this is the 4150 chrome, chrome molly vanadium. Uh, if you want a upgraded version to this, uh, they do put out one that uses an FN FN barrel, uh, but it does double the price, right? So you're paying for that Fabrique National, uh, you know, quality craftsmanship in their barrel manufacturing. You're gonna pay for that in the in the markup for this type of an upper. Um, so who is this not for? Well, this is not for the guy who's you know got. Uh, you know, maybe one AR-15 and he's looking for a second AR build, uh, I would stick with, you know, something that's more free float that gives you more options to use, you know, uh, M-Lock, you can do your lights, you can do your, you know, hand grips, whatever you're looking to do. I think this is more of a base functional type rifle for a battle you know, battle use case. Now, if you're in law enforcement, you're in security, you're looking for something that's reliable, you can't beat the reliability of a good old fashioned iron sighting system, don't have to change batteries, you don't have to sight it in very much. Once it's sighted in, it's pretty uh, rock solid. So uh, this would be something for, you know, for somebody like that, uh, you wanna stick with the, the, uh, the uh, fixed front sight, you know, fixed sighting system. I think this is a great option for you. Um, so with that guys, I'm gonna go ahead and end it here. Great little rifle, had a great time out at uh, Eagle Lake, uh, Clay and Tony doing the Lethal Weapons Texas. Uh, I wanna say thank you to Sons of Liberty Gunworks for putting that event together. Hopefully I can run it next year with one of your guns. But uh, with that guys, I'm gonna go ahead and sign off. Stay safe, stay active, stay vigilant, stay in the fight because the fight for your rights 
never ends. And man, are they coming after him, guys. So stay vigilant. Anyway, thanks, guys. I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.